A very good morning, everyone. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all to the 16th edition of India Digital Summit, Supercharging Startups, organized by Internet and Mobile Association of India. The summit is supported by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India, and Niti Ayogya. I'm your host for this session, Ayusha Mittal from IAMAI. Welcome to the panel discussion on personalizing client conversations and understanding customer journey to strengthen relationships. The session is brought to you by Gapsha. We would also like to thank our digital financial management partner, EastBuzz, conversational messaging partner, Gapsha, session partner, GoQuick, Gold partners, Manorma Online, Blink Digital, and Yellow.ai, and Silver partner, ShareChat. Without any further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ravi Sundarajan, Chief Operating Officer from Gapsha, who will be the moderator for today's discussion. Joining us today, we have a great set of leaders. Please welcome Ashish Tiwari, Chief Marketing and Digital Officer from Pure Generally India Life Insurance Co. Preeti Murthy, President from Group M Services. Sahib Jeet Singh Savne, Marketing Meme Officer from Zomato. And Pony Tripathi, Head Data Science from Wakefit. I would request all the delegates to keep posting their questions in the chat box and the panel will address few of them in the end of the session. Over to you, Mr. Ravi. Everyone. So um, uh, glad to uh, see all of you. And uh, we have an amazing panel here, practitioners who actually have done stuff. So the, as we were thinking as, uh, you know, I was also in the jury and we were discussing with some of the IMA officials on what is the most topical thing to talk about. One of the things that came up is in this age of when people are remote and doing a lot of things remote and uh, engagement and commerce and all the stuff is moving to mobile and uh, you know, it's, it's becoming important. We thought we'll talk more about how do you do, uh, you know, um, target and, and work with uh, consumers, personalizing client conversations, because today it's not just about one way messaging. It's about having these conversations and engagement so that the brands actually understand and are able to personalize some of these uh, conversations and customer journeys. And by customer journeys, we mean pre-purchase, post-purchase and, and uh, purchase journeys. And, and at Gupshop, we have been involved with several brands. We've been around for uh, at least the, the enterprise business started off with the conversational messaging platform 10 years ago. And we've grown and we've worked with several brands, including uh, most of the people here in the, in the industries. Uh, so the, the context of this, the reason we, we are excited is we see this even last year to this year, we, we're seeing like the monthly transactions about 6 billion. There are a lot of things happening in India around, um, you know, obviously data is becoming very cheap with uh, geo and all the other stuff. There's also uh, stuff with COVID has started and we have a lot of uh, innovations in digital wallets, UPI transactions, the billions of UPI transactions happening every month. So people are even able to go to regular stores and use their mobile, uh, you know, even feature phone we're working with uh, to get UPI payments on feature phones too. So, so those type of things are possible now where people can just go work with merchants, get loans and so on and so forth, this financial innovation. So innovation all over happening, that's transforming, kind of digitally transforming a lot of the industries that we are in, be it uh, CPG or FinTech or retail or, uh, um, you know, a lot of the online brands and so on and so forth, a lot of businesses are moving online. So hence the context. So uh, given that, what we will do is we will uh, have uh, these practitioners, as, as uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, Ashish from, uh, you know, Future Generali Life Insurance, uh, Preeti, who's president of the Group M Services that works with a lot of the key leading brands, Puneet, who heads up data science at Wakefit, uh, they kind of do home solutions, and then uh, Sahib Jeet Singh, who, um, who's kind of the marketing meme officer at Zomato, he'll also tell us about his title, and Zomato, obviously, is doing a lot of stuff, they've been one of the main brands working uh, super international. So that is the context of today. So uh, we'll get the panel started. So what I will do is I will ask uh, Ashish to talk more about, uh, you know, as the a uh, lot of the stuff uh, is moving, is being digitized and customers are looking for personalized policies, risk assessments, claim status updates, uh, kind of EKYC is becoming more popular, online purchase options and online support and also onboarding. You know, how does, uh, you know, Ashish, how do you see conversational platforms help businesses build these personalized pre-purchase, purchase, and, and post-purchase customer journeys. We could talk a little bit about that. Sure, we, in fact, a very, very interesting uh, topic you took in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, see, I am uh, into an industry, if you look at that, where a customer does not buy us once. 
okay but actually buys us every month or a 12 times a year for 20 years in a row or 30 years in a row that's what life insurance is and you get those many times not to kind of renew every time you have to make a uh, make up a premium payment you you have an option not to pay that premium and walk out not being a customer and hence it is very very important for insurance brands per se to be able to continuously engage with the consumers continuously keep them into a conversation okay. and that's where uh, i think to keep that conversation interesting and yet rewarding for both parties whether it is the one who is originating or the one who is at the receiving end okay you need to ensure that it is personalized i mean you can't talk random stuff all the time you have to ensure that you are being able to tell the person okay why he or she has bought where they have reached in their goals how much goal they have been able to complete what is left out in completion of the goals and how if they do not do or if what they are doing both positive and negative reinforcement in terms of what their action or inaction is going to result into and that's where i think both the conversational platforms and traditional platforms match three things which is, which empowers us and which are very important for us to be able to do is number one being able to decipher what is your current journey where do you stand in the current journey cycle so for example our entire pre-purchase cycle which is your from the lead generation to lead form of the event digital came covid and we immediately shifted to entire onboarding process as digital the one of the challenges which everybody talks with insurance is that it is very very complex i don't get to know what is there and what is not we to handle that we provide something which is called as one pager and things like that for every policy which is the most important pmp and what you pay and what you get okay which is a visual format and also we provide that in terms of a digital policy we provide the entire information so read analysis is being made. So every policy goes to a read analysis, which is being made. From there starts the conversational channel, whereas you can converse with us at any point in time. And this data is synced in so that any platform you go, you might do in consumers. So very, very unlikely that consumers will stick to one platform. You would probably on the move, you will check your fund status on the WhatsApp. And then some point in time, you will log into an app and probably raise another query. As a as a marketer, I need to track that whether if you have jumped from one platform to another, I am able to provide you next information. And not all platforms allow you to do the same conversations. If you are on an SMS, I have a limits of the character, but if you are on an app, I have much more, I can show you much more visual. If you are on WhatsApp, I have to show you only that uh, in textual format, sometimes in terms of stickers and visual, but they will, the visual might not be dynamic. So we we have created that journey in that way. Okay, so for example, one of the complaints which we got from people was that the insurer only talks about renewals. They don't talk about they don't talk about anything else. You only speak to me when there is a when there is a payment to be made, and you ghost me when I come back to you for anything. So we took it pretty seriously, and today we started something uh, which is called as a personalized health and wellness newsletter, which looks at the kind of a product you have taken, the kind of a lifestyle uh, information you have provided to me, and it curates and connects with the consumers in terms of providing them very, very self-curated goal posts which you should be following to uh, kind of enrich your life, uh, increase your protection and prevention chances. Because of as a brand, we believe that while uh, we are a what if for the things, but we certainly can enrich the life by including the protection and prevention. Okay, insurance can pay for the uh, cost, but can't take away the pain. And we want to reduce that pain as much as possible. And as I mean, as a marketer, as an organization, we believe that every individual is different. Not only as an individual, we might be one person. We are very, very different person in different contexts and different platforms. You are not the same one on our LinkedIn to a Facebook, to an Instagram, to a Twitter, or or to an emailer. And hence, it is very important for me to be able to provide you the right inputs, which is to be able to either enrich your life stage or help you move on on your life cycle. And that is where your conversational and individual personalization comes in place, 
which we are at present using. We have also enriched our entire claim journey over uh, over uh, last couple of years. And today, I mean, from the time you come back to me to the time the dispersal has happened, you will get to know every exact challenges. And we try and use B1 uh, language as one of the most simplified version of the languages, which is about being able to provide, help you understand. Otherwise, insurers are known for using terms which only they understand and nobody else. We have tried doing that. So that way, I think, uh, has helped us connect with our consumers and it is showing up in the NPS. So yeah, I think personalization is the way to go. Contextualization is the way to connect. And the third way, uh, third word, which I typically use is vernacularization or the vo or the voice version of it is the way to be able to interest deeper with the consumers. If a brand takes these three things, they should be able to generate much more reciprocative with the consumer and create better connection. So what do you have Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Ashish. And that's very useful. And and I, I totally agree with you. I think uh, we ourselves, you know, we do about 6.6 .6 billion conversations a month. And obviously, it's it's gone up a lot. And then, then of which before, um, even before Q4 or uh, last year, you know, second half of last year, it was all around post purchase, right? Now, what's happened is with the uh, advent of things like um, Instagram and even WhatsApp opening up their flow for pre purchase and purchase journeys. Um, and click to WhatsApp and a whole bunch of things happening. Obviously, Facebook Messenger, which you guys also use with WhatsApp. Uh, there are a lot more channels, Google Business Messages, so on and so forth. So this and and, and we want you you guys want to go where the consumers are today. Consumers are mainly on mobile and on mobile, the number one app is messaging, be it text messaging or any of these popular messaging apps, right? So to engaging them where they are is more important. And some of these conversations now are becoming full funnel. Before it was only about policy, as you said, policy reminders downloading payment receipts or dispatching policies or telling them auto reminders about you know your premium is coming due uh, or just, uh, you know and they, and then now it's moved to like hey let me give you some information this is what's useful for you what are the benefits and then by the way we'll uh, we, we help you complete your documentation or onboard you right and and provide things like verification process and then other after even they're onboarded telling them sending tips and engaging them around general wellness health tips uh, and in, any other stuff that you can do and creating frequently asked question chatbots and stuff like that. So, so that's very useful and, and it kind of validates what we are seeing also in a broader industry trend where we've been seeing a lot more engagement. And, and obviously we have a single API for 30 channels of which there are five, six channels I mentioned to you, uh, being WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, SMS, uh, Android RCS, and some of these channels are more, more popular that are being used and even in some cases, uh, Facebook Messenger and voice. Voice is kind of uh, very underlooked and now they're actually at the deflection flows with people because of uh, the language requirements. So, and this is a good segue uh, to ask Preeti, who's, uh, you know, uh, president at Group M and she deals with all these brands day in and day out, uh, looking at some of these uh, new people trying to transact and do stuff from a mobile uh, commerce perspective and purchase journey perspective and any other stuff that she's seeing what brands are doing these days. So, Preeti, over to you. Thanks, Ravi, and uh, thanks, Ashish. Very insightful into how brands have transformed, and I guess uh, we are seeing a very similar journey across the portfolio of brands that we handle. Uh, to give you a perspective, five years back, all these discussions, or even three years back, these discussions were there in paper, but the implementation of it was a little uh, slow and learning, and people were trying and testing. Today, it's out and open. I think uh, unique consumer journeys uh, is kind of a norm. Uh, people are uh, brands and customer journeys become critical in driving the uh, value chain with the brand to the consumers. So it's not about am I, uh, uh, you know, who's my target audience? Is the target audience, it's more about is the target audience more close to my brand or not? And how do I get them more engaged consistently and continuously? And I feel uh, what is important is not just. Uh, the understanding of data or the transaction journey or the consumer journey. It is also important for us to have the right content and creative in the right path of the journey for us to capture the consumer's interest, attention, engagement, or whatever terms we want to use. So data intelligence at one end, content and creative at the other end. And 
uh, blended with, of course, a very strong technology and platform uh, partners uh, or ecosystem. And uh, all this has to have a very strong activation and orchestration without which uh, the storytelling won't emerge through the journeys. Uh, uh, you know, there will not be enough accelerators for brands to uh, engage with the consumers also. So these become very important in today's time, uh, uh, very live and very real. Brands like Cadbury's have, like if I look at the non-FMCG, I think it's far easier. Because, you know, like a wake fit or, or like how uh, Ashish's brands, Future Gender Insurance, Finance, uh, Zomato, these are brands that are built on such ecosystem, right? But if I look at the other side of the world, which is FMCG, they've also transitioned beautifully. And uh, last three, three years, you can see them out and about brands like Cadbury uh, doing it more actively. Brands, uh, sports brands like Adidas, uh, globally, they have adopted this. Uh, unique messaging ecosystem, uh, understanding the data journeys through the data partner platforms and messaging the right input, uh, a creative, uh, everything is customized. So to me, uh, the mammoth of the visualization of, oh my God, how am I going to do it unique to the consumer is now simplified thanks to, of course, the tech evolvements. Uh, and the coming together of the creative forces, the tech forces, the brand uh, custodians, and the uh, acceleration or the execution uh, entities. It has seamlessly brought us alive uh, more uh, for FMCGs, which were not hosting it in-house, unlike uh, Wakefit or Zomato. So this is a big transition I have seen uh, or witnessed uh, from the industry. The other important uh, point, uh, which I want to also highlight, uh, this is the way the consumers have also shifted in the way they engage with brands. Uh, like I was um, uh, mentioning beforehand also that the localization and the language vernacular becomes more important because there are more vernacular platforms emerging now. Uh, so there is one Instagram way of working and then there is the local um, language platforms way of working for the consumers. So whether it be ShareChat, Moj, uh, or your Trell or such platforms, uh, which get into more content commerce on the face um, uh, than many other platforms that uh, like an Instagram would, you know, do. Now that is another big shift in the trend, which we need to understand. And uh, there are many local brands that just live on these platforms and not otherwise. They don't have a .com or a .in. They're just there. Um, I know that the 18 to 20 year olds in a city, in a in a in a smaller city, mini metro, will latch on to these brands faster than the traditional way of doing it on Facebook and Google and so forth. So yeah, so these these are some perspectives that are emerging very strongly, and I think the next. 18 to 20 months will be interesting to see how these platforms are able to scale up for national brands as well as local brands. Over to you, Ravi. Yeah, thanks, Preeti. Uh, and and, and um, I agree with you. I guess uh, the the way the engagement and it's not only it's just online business is obviously much more suited to do that, but it's even the a lot of the brick and mortar and also the CPG brands and retail companies and all of them also are doing it. And it's cost because of the various the, 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 the necessity now, right? Because people are remote and it's kind of accelerated. Uh, as you see, not only we have seen like a 50 to 100 percent growth in the last two years, every year, year on year. But in general, even the consumers, right? The, the Indian e-commerce ecosystem just got a big jolt. And even before bots and conversations were just as you said, that they're on theory on paper. Now think about it, even a company like us is doing 6 billion conversations a month, it's like huge. And um, any brand that you can think of is saying, I need to have a, a engagement strategy to go where my consumers are. If they are on mobile and popular messaging apps and text messaging, uh, you know, you'll have to uh, figure out how do you engage them there. And and that is kind of, and it, it's a, the whole range of things, right? It could be one way, it could be two way, it could be, uh, uh, you know, giving them, uh, more information about the products and, and so on and so forth, or even like uh, upselling, cross-selling, sales assistance, abandoned carts that you can do before. You know, now you have the ability, to, even for vernacular, in addition to voice, uh, WhatsApp has created these buttons, right? All of them, even Instagram is much more visual. 
So you can go even if you don't, uh, even if your uh, the levels of literacy are different in, in non-urban areas, you can go and click on these visual things and look at them and say you can. It's a, it's a button-based uh, things that are given to users and it's, it's visual stuff is available. So they could even do omni-channel payments, uh, look at get product information, do EKYC, uh, you know, get support and so on and so forth, and then. Um, that so I think that's kind of um, changing the way we look at stuff, so uh, which is pretty good and also and also there's all these organic entry points from social media that that can click into some of your messaging channels uh, and some of the regular support things that they have. So it's becoming part of fabric of how you engage consumers and personalize some of these things, right? And talking about personalization, I'd like to have Puneet join us. He's head of data science at Wakefit, and then Wakefit is kind of started off. Uh, on and they, they had a dot com uh, dot co presence, but I think more and more of the transactions are online, and because of the current situation, and then even their customer conversations are people purchase employees are very uh, they are looking at how to make it contextual, timely, targeted, personalized purchases, right? So I think Puneet, uh, if you could talk to some of your experiences on some of the personalized conversations and. and how has led to improvement in your ROI. We're talking about, I didn't bring up the numbers, but you're seeing across there's a three inks improvement engagement. It is just not improve action and support comes with it, or, uh, you know, um, just more transactions, instead, but the engagement is completely changed. You see a two inks engagement uh, improvement uh, somewhere, you know, for, for these and thing, when the engagement increases, uh, uh, so, uh, I keep on losing you. I don't know if it's just me or others as well. It's with me also, I think. Yeah. Uh, there is a lag. Okay. A lag. okay. Did you, can you, can you, can you, uh, so, uh, yeah, Go ahead, I'll take it forward, I think. Uh, you know, see, uh, Bigfoot is a, uh, home solution and sleep solution company we started as a sleep solution organization we were selling mattresses and sleep accessories like pillows protectors comforters bed sheets but uh, in 2020 uh, we pivoted and we uh, started a whole range of furniture and engineering wood and as well as uh, we were selling session wood cots because that was also part of our sleep solution offering uh, beds, mattresses, and everything. But uh, uh, off late, we have been focusing very heavily on building home solution. And uh, we strongly believe that this is a very good time to be in the space. Uh, unfortunately, during the same 2020 COVID hit, and we we got a bit worried about how uh, how this whole space is going to look like in a month or two months or a six month span. But uh, but interestingly, uh, the whole work from home scenario, staying 24 seven home, being closer to uh, your family and people around you, made people realize the importance of quality furniture, quality accessories of comfort at their home, how important it is to have a good study table and a study chair, how important it is to have a ergonomically uh, suited furniture in terms of sofas or whether it is uh, uh, a chair that you relax on. So all these things people started looking at. Now uh, we push to our customers to emails, SMSs, and push notifications, and the the con the conversations could be around a simple update like you know a transaction update that where your order is. But at the same time, there, there are a lot of new products which are coming in. There are a lot of new offers which are coming in, different sales which are ongoing. And since people, since uh, wave two hit and now wave three is also hitting, people understand the importance of work from home furniture. People understand the importance of a very good uh, seating space. Uh, how to create, uh, how to create a space that will let their creative juices flow. People who are working in creative industry. So essentially communicating to them and helping them understand that what all different kinds of ideas which are available for them to work on and how to organize their space that will be suited for their, uh, for, for, for their respective works. We created a, a, 
uh, a dream home studio kind of thing where people uh, came I, I mean it's not a space that we created it's a customer space how they're using this furniture and uh, really good suggestions on how they can organize their spaces the way we communicate with our customer is uh, in order to let them know what kind of new products are coming what kind of uh, new uh, propositions are coming what kind of uh, policies that are changing what uh, informing the word policies uh, Preeti talked about a very interesting use case about around abandonment and uh, and that is actually a very good use case for us because a lot of customers I mean, making a commitment to uh, home furniture is a, is not a thing which is based on repeat. You, you don't go and buy a chair every two weeks or every two months. So essentially, it's a long-term commitment. So people tend to go through multiple websites, touch on multiple places, explore multiple offerings before they actually sign up on one. So letting them know that you know these are the different features in the product these are the different uh, product that they can these are different alternatives to the one they're looking for are actually good conversation that helps them second thing is being in time for uh, being in time for having these conversations so when a customer is making up his mind having a chat with them letting them know that these are the products which are offered these are the products which are available these are the different kind of sales which are running if if uh, if a discount is something that you're looking forward to for uh, for making a, a purchase decision so uh, reaching out to them just in time when they're browsing when they're going through that and they have logged off from browsing letting them know that these are the product that you have visited why don't you go ahead and sign up for them why don't you go ahead and give them a purchase and give them a try? And if you don't like it, we'll, we'll be there for you. That goes a long way with these customers. Lastly, uh, uh, one of the key things which has helped us is uh, have been push notification. We have all, we are also exploring some of the conversational bots like uh, what what uh, WhatsApp offers, what other uh, similar platforms offer. But essentially, uh, having helping them that you know there's a uh, uh, if if we understand there's a price sensitivity with the customer and if there's a price drop which has happened, informing them about the price drop takes helps them make decision in that moment itself. Uh, if, they, if, there are, uh, if there is a question of variety and they're, uh, they're going forward and looking on a particular PDP for a very long time, on a particular chair they're hanging up there, you know, they're, they're constantly visiting a particular chair for a very long time. Helping them understand that that chair, which was out of stock earlier, is now back in stock, helps them make decision that you know this is the chair I like, and maybe I can go ahead and simply make a purchase before it runs out of stock again. So similar thing, I can see Preeti smiling because uh, she might be relating to a lot of these use cases. But but these uh, activities that help customer know that what is happening, what kind of things are available, and helping. And these things are uh, known just in time to make that decision always helps once they have made a decision no matter how much you reach out to them there is very little that can be done about it yeah uh, you, thanks Puneet. yeah thanks Puneet. I, I guess in the last uh, a couple of minutes before Puneet came on there was some lag on, on my end i think covid x usually uses a lot of bandwidth and like zoom that's why 80% of the people use Zoom, but there are some limitations of some things. But uh, uh, anyway, so I think what I was saying, I totally agree with you, Punit. In terms of contextualization and uh, personalization, things are becoming much more different. And what's changing now, which wasn't the case before, was these journeys now are more not just about just support or reducing support costs or optimizing one or two things. It's more about uh, you know targeting everyone. It's just not about 150 million people living in few urban areas in India using some stuff for basic things. It's about right. whole Bharat, right? So it's about non-urban areas too. For that, you need to right. have to make it visual. And visual, what WhatsApp is doing, and that's why I was uh, mentioning earlier um, where there was when there was lag, was that you people use buttons, visual images. Like Instagram is coming in, as Preeti was mentioning, and even in WhatsApp, they completely changed it, right? They created pre-purchase quality-based messaging where you can have a lot of graphic stuff and share product information about your product uh, to the consumers. So they make informed decisions and personalized decisions and you can target it. You have product catalogs now before in a message, now I can show 
uh, uh, 30, up to 39 uh, products in one message where I can show a whole catalog in a WhatsApp mm -hmm. message, right? So with these buttons and visual things and templates and uh, all the other stuff, visual, it becomes easier for non-urban, even if the, if the levels of literacy differ, they can click on these things and pick and choose some of these things. And of with course. voice, uh, as uh, um, you know, as Ashisha talked about, even the voice stuff is, is changing the whole thing. So that's the whole change. And that with this enables you to make it more personal and engage people better for a larger swath of, of people than just the 150 million people in a few and urban areas. But it's like, it opens up to a few, four, 500 million people who are anybody, in fact, the gateway to India, anybody gets a phone, they get WhatsApp and they put through that and then text messaging, right? And if you have a link, you can get onto anything. So you're of saying course, uh, Of course, Savi, and I can't agree more on that because uh, all these uh, traditional channels like SMSs and emails, which have existed ever since eternity really but uh i mean in the context of marketing of course uh but uh they, these tend to be mostly unidirectional where you let the customer know that you know this is the thing available for you right but but making it much more conversational making fortifying it and helping providing them with context right then and there having a conversation helping them that you know this, this is the catalog and these are the top, top five star product for you uh, that's based right. on your purchase history or based on your browse history, these, these are the products which are best suited for you. That 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 definitely will go a long way. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing that has changed the last eighteen months, right? Before, because we we, we, are, a, we are a global company with bigger presence in emerging markets like India and and, and Latin and others. But we would see the stock difference, right? Even like 2018, 19, the biggest use case yeah. was eighty percent of the two-way messages in Latin, whereas India ninety percent mm -hmm. was one way. But it changed, all changed in mid 2020 with a combination of not only really COVID, but also India pushing hard on a lot of fintech innovation because now people mm -hmm. can get personalized loans uh, over the, just in 10 minutes, right? Uh, even the fintech ecosystem, the banking ecosystem, everything has been disrupted because of a lot of innovations like the digital wallets and UPI and bandwidth availability, right? Geo kind of changed the whole thing and COVID mm -hmm. created the need. The infrastructure and the innovation was there. With COVID, it just kind of, uh, you know, people had to do it. There's no other choice. So that right. jump started our two way conversation, kind of uh, conversational engagement uh, in the last 18 months. It just has taken off. And then now we can do mobile commerce, even digital commerce, and catch up with people like China, where we, they were six, seven, next times ahead of us. So, right. you know, um, given that, you know, I'd like to, um, uh, you know, introduce uh, Sahibji. So he's been at Zomato on the product side. Now he's moved to marketing from, from doing digital marketing and product marketing. He now is doing. He's a marketing meme officer. He'll tell us what it means and why he calls himself that. Uh, and so, but Zomato, you know, as you know, has been one of the earlier brands that kind of one of the flagship online businesses that actually had a global presence. And then they've been at it for quite some time and done everything. They've also been worked with us on several WhatsApp um, journeys, uh, be it pre-purchase, purchase, post-purchase post for both on the uh, rider side and the driver side and consumers. So I'll let uh, Saibji talk more about uh, some of the experience they've had in learning. Uh, right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was listening to everyone and I was thinking that in today's world, especially in tech product, right? If, if you're not doing personalization, because you have a lot of data, if you're not doing personalization, you're just lazy. If you're not in marketing, if you're not present only channel, you're slow. You're going for a slow death as well. So I think now that, see, let's talk about Zomato. Let's talk about food ordering. Even in food ordering and a simple order, your browsing behavior, uh, the dish you like, the restaurant you like, where you are, uh, where you're ordering from, home, office, there's so much data in just one order that if your experience is not personalized to you, if you're not personalizing your experience for you, uh, we're not doing a good job at it. So if you look at customer journeys for Zomato, let's say for online ordering, the customer journey is pretty simple, right? You acquire a customer, they install the app. Then there's the activation phase where they first place the order. And then there's a repeat phase where they keep on placing the order. And after that, if someone has stopped placing the order, there's a resurrection phase. So in each phase of the journey, our comms are personalized. Uh, your push notifications, your emailers you get, uh, the SMS, we uh, don't use a lot of SMS, but the SMS you get, even the retargeting on digital, on the Instagram ads you'll get, 
the Facebook ad, uh, the messaging on uh, Instagram stories, uh, the promoted content, okay, can be personalized and it is to be personalized, right? Yes. So I think it's very important to stay top of the mind with the right kind of messaging with the user. I'll give you an example. Uh, 13 January is both uh, starts is Lori uh, in North India, while it's Pongal in uh, the southern part of uh, the country. So what will happen is uh, a different emailer, a different communication will go to South India versus North India. That's just a simple example of uh, how personalization is working. Even stuff like people on the app, some people uh, order from different cuisines. Uh, so they're more exploratory with what they want to order, what they want to eat. While some people are not, uh, some people order only set from set restaurants. I like this restaurant, I'm not exploratory. I just want to exploit this restaurant and order from that. So that is also a lot of data uh, which is out there. So personalization is uh, the key. If you look at brand messaging, if you look at uh, communication, uh, brand communication, engagement uh, is is the key metric where you want to drive. And uh, in today's world, uh, where attention span is so less, if you're not uh, striking the right chord, if you're not striking uh, the right emotion with the user, what he wants, uh, then you'll just fall flat. Your CTRs will fall flat, all the key metrics will fall flat. So I think that is where uh, what we try and focus on that uh, understand the user because uh, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of insight. Understand the user and use that uh, insight to uh, target the user, to use that insight to have a conversation with the user throughout the journey. This is on the customer front, even on the driver front. Uh, see, we have a lot of rest, uh, we have a lot of restaurant partners, and we also have a lot of uh, delivery partners. So, in our delivery partner ecosystem, uh, when you sign up to being a delivery partner, it's it's like like you're riding an Uber. It's a uh, it's a gig economy. It's a freelancing economy. Uh, so, when you want to sign up, there were some documentations. Uh, people from different areas uh, of uh, the country are coming to sign up, uh, non-urban areas, people who might not understand English right from, they will have local languages. So it just became important to have these contracts in local language. <laughs> important for that onboarding flow to be in a familiar format, like we're using WhatsApp onboarding now, we're using that pick up ship only. So it's important that there's a familiar uh, uh, UX for them to upload because everybody is using WhatsApp, giving them an app who's not uh, uh, helping them out. Uh, them visiting an office uh, is uh, and signing up to be a uh, delivery partner is also out of the question with COVID coming in. So to under, understanding the journey and understanding the context of where your customer can be uh, is uh, super important. See, there's data, data everywhere. There's less insights where company drive. And uh, that is super important nowadays. I mean, even in the digital marketing uh, front, you see different ad creatives being created for uh, different kind of uh, people you want to target. Right now, if you can, uh, for example, I'll just share an example. Uh, so we recently started targeting people who are interested in Bitcoin. People are interested in uh, crypto. How can I start a conversation about food ordering with that customer? So we said BTC, and that's actually butter chicken also. So it is, it's uh, stuff like that. You have to be creative uh, in how you want to start engaging users. Yeah, thanks, Saeed. Uh, uh, I think we are into our last 10 minutes, and obviously I'll, I'll ask some general questions, and there are audience questions also coming in. Maybe this one is for you, Saeed Jitya, what do you this? The question number one is, they're saying personalization and targeting is important. But however, from a customer's perspective, you know, with so much of information overload, how to, does it, you know, what do you do when customers ignore some of the targeted messages? Uh, I guess I'll let you answer that and, and then we'll open it up for other questions too that I will have for the other panelists. So it's very important that personalization do not go to a level of spookiness that, hey, you know too much about me or hey, you're troubling me too much with the messages. So we, the companies, product managers, marketers have to be mindful of both these aspects. One is presenting the information. See, ultimately personalization should be helping the user. It should not be helping your use case. So presenting the user with something which is useful will never get 
and in, uh, an overload for the user. And if you're sending communication which is not useful and sending in the high frequency, marketers have to be mindful of, I'm just saying, let's say push notification as an aspect. Marketers have been, to be mindful of, hey, I'm uh, interrupting the uh, uh, mind space too much of the customer. There have to be, there should be easy options for people to opt out and signals from, uh, see, it's, yeah, marketers have to be ethical here, and signals if customer is not responding to your messages, if he's not just opening your email, uh, the email as you said, you have to stop sending him emails. You have to stop uh, sending him those WhatsApp messages, sending him those SMS if they're not been clicking on that. And you have enough data on that. So I think it's uh, both ways. The product has to be seamless where people can opt out. And uh, marketers and product managers in general have to be mindful of that. Yeah, good suggestions. Uh, uh, the, the next question I had is uh, more for uh, Ashish. I know you talked a little bit about voice and we talked about vernacular stuff. And, you know, and, and I think some of the audiences say, yeah, more from, my, from the previous panels I've had, I've always had these questions about how do you target some of these non-urban areas using some of these voice type of things. And you talked, you touched upon a little bit, and maybe as a question, you can little, expand a little bit more because I know people have, uh, you know, everybody wants to expand how they look at uh, engaged consumers. And typically a lot of the solutions currently today are focused on just the urban area, 150, 200 million people that keep coming up again and again. That's kind of the internet thing, but there's, another 600 million or 3x that or 2x that number of people who you can still target to with other forms, visual forms and, and that other stuff. Yeah. Sure, very, very interesting uh, question. Thank you for that. See, uh, I have a little bit of a differentiation when it, uh, a different of, uh, difference of thought when it comes to urban and rural. I think that there is a city in every town and there is a town in every city. Okay, so whether it is Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, you have people from all different strata, okay. And uh, literacy, while uh, published literacy rate for India is almost about 67%, literacy for India is about writing and reading your own name. If you move beyond that, and if you are talking about uh, kind of most of the instructions which are in English, because of marketers, and marketers have a, have a tendency of making everything sound complex because that gives us a feeling that we are doing something worthwhile. Okay. And I have a MBA teaches you to jargonize everything. If you want to de jargonize it, if you look at the people who are able to understand English, read and write fluently are only about 20 odd percent. Okay. And if you if your messaging remains in that, then you are only targeting 20. And that's the use case of vernacular. For voice, there's a very, very interesting use case. The use case is that while only these 20% can read and write, okay, if you look at the uh, deaf and dumbs in the country, there's only about 1% deaf and dumbs in the country. Rest 99% can actually voice out what they want to say. So while you might not be able to read, write, even Hindi or your local vernacular language, okay, you'll be able to speak up. I mean, for a taxi guy, he might not be able to write properly that I, whatever he wants to write, even in his vernacular and local language, he speaks that language every day. So if you make your interaction possible on voice, then you are able to reach 99% suddenly. Vernacular and voice are that's why important. But at the same point in time, there are challenges on voice. Okay. In text, when you talk, for example, when you go to a search on Google, you write something, Google presents you some 10 options. And you have a next page, next page, next page. So if you are not getting something, you will move on to next and next and next. Basically, here the complexity is moved to user end. But when it comes to voice, you speak to when you speak to Alexa, you ask her to play a song. Yeah. Either the song is played or it is not. She doesn't give you an option for 10 different menu lists. Okay. So in voice, you only have one right option. Either you hit it or not. So complex complexity has come to the end of the Basically, creator. The second biggest challenge when it comes to voice is, if you if you come to think of it, a cat is CAT. In whichever part of the country you are, if you are speaking in English, a cat is CAT. But if you look at the moment you go on voice, the cat can be cat, cat, at, right. or whatever. Right. Therefore, right. different pronunciation right. for the same thing. Okay. So suddenly one cat 
can be actually 10 different cats. And India is a country where every 100 kilometers you have a different dialect. Okay. I mean, I was amazed to see somebody can call Lattu to the electric bulb. Yeah, okay, electric bulb is, I guess uh, some of these times around diction and uh, lingual things that becomes important. Yeah, so I think that's that's the challenge, and that is that is something which brands need to cover, uh, need to start thinking. Today, I think, uh, but at the same point in time, I think vernacular and voice are becoming easier to uh, to offer because there are multiple services available. So there are services for both. There are third party startups. There are API services which are available, which one can use to create a platform for doing a real time voice and vernacular the quality is not probably up to a mark but it is it is upgrading very very fast google itself yeah. is providing you the options for that there are third party providers so i think that one should certainly certainly try and the it's all about trial and error in digital if there is one thing which i have learned over a period of my entire journey is about there are nothing called as perfection it will change before you deploy so the sooner you deploy and the sooner you start learning cycles. Right. Try different things at home. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. So yeah. one, of the, I had one other question for uh, Preeti. Uh, you know, you're dealing with several brands. Uh, the question I had is, what do you see in terms of uh, the ROI of, with all these omni-channel journeys that are using? Are people seeing enough ROI? And how important is omni-channel? You know, if you could briefly talk about that. I know um, I have a few minutes, I think. Uh, yeah. Four, so, uh, down, but I thought I'd ask you this question. yeah, a very pertinent question, actually, because ultimately it's the commerce, like I said, you know, all these funnels have to lead into it. And increasingly what we are saying, seeing as a norm is the multi-level KPI that we are uh, managing many campaigns with. It's not single commerce KPIs alone. It's engagement, it's traffic, it's a combination thereof. And each element we use as input is measured through the journey during using different metrics because that unified matrix of commerce is the final outcome of it but the journey also needs to be measured so there is that blended uh, approach to roi that we are seeing increasingly uh, though i know for that a brand's end uh, when they manage it in-house they see quite differently whereas when we are managing it uh, for them uh, there are different KPIs for the agency, different KPIs for the brand team and for the partner teams. Uh, but the reality is that there is no single uniformed answer that an industry would have or a marketplace would have uh, because each industry was, or each category is defining the KPIs basis, their business tasks. So for example, if it is the early stages of uh, setting up a omni-channel ecosystem, then a combination of traffic and engagement would happen. And that's where the content play would, uh, you know, be of a strong importance and relevance. If it's a mature stage, then it's a lot of uh, engagement and more of, uh, you know, purchase matrix that we will start uh, plugging in. So it's a it's a blended approach today. Um, and thanks to all the data coming in together, it's far easier for us to distill how can we measure engagement and what matrix drive that vis-a-vis -vis how can we. Uh, uh, focus on the traffic and what is the matrix or inputs driving those traffic or platforms driving those traffic. So that's how we are looking at. Uh, but uh, uh, between Group M and the WPP ecosystem uh, company like Choreograph, we are able to take it one notch above and look at uh, multi-level, uh, multi-dimensional analytics to ensure that omni-channel is also working uh, far more effectively for the brand. Uh, rather than looking at its single dimension and saying that this is a linear funnel and hence we need to look at it that way great yeah i think we are uh, we just have a minute left so i'll uh, hand it over to imai to kind of uh, wind down the thing i really thank everyone for your time and valuable thank insights you. and i think as practitioners in the industry you guys um, have been able to provide good insights to all the, all the people attending the session uh, over to you guys Thank you, everyone. Thank you for such an engaging discussion yes. today. Uh, special thanks to goes, uh, special thanks goes to all our panelists and our moderator for being here and making this possible today. Another thank you goes to our attendees for being here with us today. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.